The weekend is a glorious time, these magical 48 hours where ideally you wouldn't have to work. The sun always seems to come out to play and there's a real potential for being able to sleep in rather than it just being a dream always out of reach. But I don't think you should do that. I don't think you should sleep in. I think you should take advantage of the fact that everybody else is sleeping in and you should go out for a drive, but not in your regular daily driver that will only remind you of the week that you just finished and have you dreading the week that is to come, you should drive something a little bit different, a little bit exciting, unique. But what should that be? Well, I may have found the answer. It's this, the 2024 Porsche 718 Boxster GTS 4.0. It may take a full set of lungs to say the name, but rest assured it won't be the only instance where it takes your breath away. Now, it might sound silly to say, but choosing the right weekend car is quite important and quite a difficult task at that because you have to be able to justify doing something that isn't really all that logical to begin with. Now, in my position, that might be a little bit easier, but by the time you can actually afford the base MSRP of $97,300, there might be more people to convince than just yourself. Luckily, the Boxster makes that job a tiny bit easier by addressing all of the right criteria. Let's start with the easy ones first. A weekend car should look good, something you want to cover in the garage and whip off the cover with gusto over and over again. This does look good. With standard 20-inch wheels, the sport design package with a bespoke front bumper specific for the GTS, cooler dual rear exhaust pipes which are active, and let's not forget, it's a Boxster. So at a flip of a switch, it transforms to look even better. A weekend car should be attainable. Otherwise, it would just be a dream car. You might as well sleep in and enjoy it in your subconscious. Now, with an MSRP just under 100000 I can understand it swaying you away a little bit. But we live in a world where a Toyota SUV can cost you eighty grand. So you might as well not upgrade the family car, spend a little bit more, and get something nice for yourself. I'm sure they'll understand. The GTS also holds its value quite well, and as the years progress, I think that advantage is only going to be enhanced. But I'll explain why later on in the video, because I want to talk about a really core issue. You see, you drive to work every single day of the week, so that commute is killer, and you don't really want to jump in to driving on your days off, unless the car you're driving is worthwhile. And I think that this is, for a few reasons. First off, every trim below the GTS has some variation of a flat four with turbochargers, different performances based on your trim. With this GTS 4 liter, as the name suggests, it has a 4 liter naturally aspirated flat six. It's actually very similar to the one that you get in the 718 Spider. And by very similar, I mean it's exactly the same. There's no mechanical differences whatsoever between the engine and the transmission of those two cars. It's only software. And the Spider is much more expensive and much harder to get your hands on. This means the GTS 4.0 makes 394 horsepower, 20 down from the Spider's 414, but the same torque at 309 pound feet. 0 to 60 takes just 4.3 seconds, and the same two transmission options exist the 7 speed PDK and the 6 speed manual. But compared to the Spider, this is lighter by 49 pounds, has 0.2 cubic feet of additional luggage space at 4.4 cubic feet, so it's more practical. And that isn't the end of the benefits going for the GTS. This next bit has to do with the roof. You see, on the 718 Spider, it's not a fully automated roof. Part of it is manual, and that means that you either have to get out of your car to put the roof down or up, or you have to hire a servant. And that's one of the only options I think that Porsche doesn't offer that you could pay for, which makes it very expensive and quite inconvenient. In this car, the story is much different, as I shall now demonstrate, because all you need is a finger. So when you get into the car, there's a switch, and you pull that switch. You should probably close your door. You could be at a set of lights. I think you can go as fast as 30 miles an hour, and it will do everything for you completely automated. No problems whatsoever. The next thing I want to bring up might be a little bit less sexy to discuss when you're talking about a nice open top sports car, but I think it's very important. And that has to do with value retention. You see, the conversation's already going to be hard enough to justify to logic and probably your partner 
that you should spend loads of money on a car with no purpose other than to have fun. But that conversation is only going to be made more difficult if the car that you choose depreciates and the value drops like a rock in still water. That's not the case with this GTS and to make sure that I wasn't wrong, I went onto Porsche Finder and I looked at every single listing for the 982 or 718 Boxer GTS and indeed the 981, the predecessor to this car. Now I only found four for sale and I searched with a radius of over 500 miles and the average depreciation for those four cars was about 2,000 US dollars. That's almost no depreciation whatsoever and I believe one of the cars was actually posted for higher than MSRP, all of which had miles. For the 981 Gen, the one before this one, there were none for sale. Now that does give me a very small pool to collect data from, but what it also does is kind of justify my point. People aren't selling these, they're buying them and they're holding on to them, which is what makes a car valuable to begin with. They don't want to get rid of them, whether it's because they think they're going to go up or because they just love the car and it drives so great. Whatever it happens to be, let's take this one out for a real quick drive before it sells to see what it's like on the road. A couple things about this car. First of all, you really can't beat a naturally aspirated flat six. I know that every YouTuber and every person that likes cars says the same thing, naturally aspirated is the best. But there's a reason for that. It's because it is the best. And it's not because it's the fastest, it's not because it's the most efficient, it's just because it's the most enjoyable. They sound really good, they give very linear power delivery, and the reality is, the more cars that come out, the less likely it is that you'll find an NA engine, especially a flat six over at Porsche that's centered very conveniently in the middle. There's a rumor out there that the mid-engine platform, the Boxster and the Cayman, are going to be fully electric in the near future. And by near future, I mean as early as 2025. Now, of course, this is just a rumor that I've read on a couple of different articles. And if that does end up happening, it could be the end of not just naturally aspirated flat sixes in mid-engine Porsches, but petrol powered Porsches mid-engine entirely. That would be a very sad day. Now, compared to the Spider, the GTS is going to be a little bit more livable, a little bit more forgiving in my opinion and that's because the suspension is not going to be quite as hard the ground clearance is going to be a little bit better in the GTS and yes you don't have those really cool rear haunches that cover the top in the spider it's not as exclusive it's maybe not as desirable but all of that means that the pricing is a little bit down also worth noting it being a GTS it comes fairly well equipped right out of the box. Whereas with a base model or an S, you'd have to add a lot of things as optional extras, which will inevitably drive up the price. This comes standard with Porsche Active Suspension Management, Porsche Torque Vectoring, Sport Chrono Package, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, all standard on Porsches now. So the livability quality of this car is really not that bad. And you have plenty of storage space. You could drive this car every day if you really, really wanted to. And that makes it a much easier sell as a weekend car because you can use it outside of the weekend. It does have the added benefit that a lot of other sports cars don't have of being a convertible. Now, I was not always a fan of convertibles until I bought a convertible. Now I love having a convertible because it's just, you have two cars. You have two completely different personalities, two completely different ways of experiencing the same car and it's very very enjoyable as a track car yes the Cayman probably is a better option but we don't live on a racetrack we live in roads with people and other cars and so when you can't necessarily enjoy the power of this car you can put the roof down and enjoy everything around you and that makes for a great weekend car it is quite sad that the naturally aspirated mid-engine platform for Porsche might be bidding us farewell, but there might be some silver lining. It protects the investment for those of us that either already own them or are planning to own them in the near future, almost makes spending the money on these cars logical. But that's all I have for this video. Thank you so much for watching. A big thank you to Porsche Riverside for loaning me this shark blue example of the Boxer GTS. They currently have this available for sale, so if you're in the market, 
check the links down in the description below. Otherwise, leave me a comment with your thoughts. Do you agree with my selection for the perfect weekend car, or do you have a differing opinion? Let us know down below. Like, subscribe, hit the bell icon so that you don't miss a video, but until the next one, thank you again for watching, and take care.